Uh, my name is Lukas Malina. I am from Brno, Univer Brno University of Technology, and I'm here to talk about uh, cybersecurity in post quantum era. So let me firstly say a few words about our project, which is dedicated to this topic. Actually, this project is uh, with Estonian partners, and also this is the cooperation of Brno University of Technology and Red Hat. And uh, this project is more or less for like building the networks and uh, uh, good relationships in the research and innovation. And uh, we have six research challenges. And one of them is, of course, post quantum cryptography or quantum safe cybersecurity. And uh, this will be the topic for today's short talk, which will be approximately about uh, 35 minutes. So, what about our motivation? As you know, today there is the, a lot of news about uh, developing an uh, innovation in the field of quantum computing and what means for the current cybersecurity and uh, for the current protocols what we are using every day. It means a lot because in case that some really functional quantum computer will come, then we have the problem. Everybody have the problem because everyone use, let's say, a secure connection in HTTPS, right? So everyone should be aware if some quantum computer will be in the world. But what mean it, uh, what is mean in technical, we will we will talk about it. So basically, quantum computers and current state. At now, there are like a lot of big companies which are trying to uh, build the quantum computer. Uh, for instance, Google, for instance, D-Wave, or for instance, of course, IBM. But all of these com uh, quantum computers are still not ready to be efficient to crack the all things in cryptography. And now we have the oldest, which is the D-Wave, but D-Wave is based on a different uh, approach, which is more or less like analog computer. And uh, even it works with thousands of qubits, it's not like able uh, to compute a short algorithm, which is like essential for cracking current asymmetric crypto. But and other companies or like uh, big teams, this is not only about IBM and Google, these uh, teams are conducted uh, from uh, universities and uh, researchers, so they are working on actually really quantum computers and now we have the functional quantum computers with hundreds of qubits. But still, this is the good news that uh, these uh, uh, low amounts of qubits are not very like efficient to solve short uh, algorithm and crack the asymmetric crypto. And uh, about the short algorithm, it was uh, defined in uh, 1994 by Peter Shor, and uh, this algorithm is basically jeopardize all asymmetric crypto. And why is that? Because this algorithm can crack basic uh, math problems used in asymmetric crypto. Uh, it cracks uh, factorization and a digital algorithm problem. So this means for us that everything for, uh, which is used for authentication based on certificates and for key exchange will be now like uh, not uh, secure and uh, we need to find some uh, uh, substitution and uh, secure options. But as I mentioned, we still don't have the comp uh, quantum computers which are able to, uh, let's say, fully uh, use short algorithm because uh, there is the estimation that, for instance, if you would like to crack RSA, which uh, 2,000 bit keys, you need the really functional 
quantum computer which uh, 4,000 qubits perfectly working and then, okay, you are able to crack it in the seconds. But this is the still big problem. Now we have only hundreds of qubits and there is the problem that uh, quantum computer is still working with certain probability of mistakes. And this estimation for 4,000 uh, qubits assume that the quantum computers will be without the mistakes because you need to do the process without the mistakes and then you are able to crack it in the couple of seconds. So this is good news for us, for the uh, security experts that we are still have the time to be prepared. And there is also the, another algorithm which is less known and his name is Gruber algorithm and this algorithm jeopardizes also symmetric crypto. Why is that? Because this algorithm is more general and he like uh, uh, downgrade the problems uh, for let's say finding the secret keys by brute force to this assumption. And uh, this uh, algorithm can like jeopardize symmetric crypto, but we have the simple solution. We just need to use the longer keys. So symmetric crypto and hash functions are still okay because we can only just use and increase the sizes of the keys. So what about the uh, approaches and countermeasures against the quantum computing threats for the cybersecurity? We have basically two options or two fields which are like uh, be helpful in quantum era. We can use quantum cryptography also known as quantum key distribution. This approach is very, very long, uh, sorry, old and it's uh, only just to serve us to exchange the keys. If you know somebody, uh, Bennett and Brassard exchange uh, protocol, so that's it. You need, you need expensive devices. These devices, these sets of Alice and Bob's cost like uh, 100,000 uh, euros, so it's very pricey, and it just to serve for key exchange. But what about the uh, signing? We need to signing like we have the software updates, so then we have to sign the packages. We need, we need also authenticate. We need uh, some certificates. So quantum cryptography based on a QKD is not have the answers for this. But what field have the answers? Post-quantum cryptography. Post-quantum cryptography can be run directly on the current computers, current platforms, because this cryptography just to look on the mathematical problems and construct cryptographic schemes differently that can withstand short algorithm and quantum computer attacks. So quantum uh, cryptography, post-quantum cryptography uh, has the cure for all problems with what we have. And therefore, uh, NIST institution, uh, like five years ago, start with the standardization and just uh, announce the open calls to find the new standards which can uh, be good substitutions in the future. So let's talk uh, directly about the post-quantum cryptography. And as I mentioned, this crypto solves everything in cybersecurity and prepare us for the, uh, the post-quantum era. Uh, it's fun fact that the post-quantum cryptography is here very long, very long. It's 40 years old. Some schemes are very old and, uh, but uh, these times when the quantum computing have the booms in the news, so then a lot of researchers started to more pay attention to this. Post-quantum crypto can be like divided to a couple of families, a couple of approaches, and we will focus on these, which are also like uh, present in the standards from the NIST. So one biggest family is uh, lattice-based cryptography, 
This crypto use the lattices. It's uh, high dimensionally grids, uh, and it used the special problems when just the small chance, uh, small change of coordinates, like cause some very hard problems to find the secret or just to uh, forge the signature or crack the ciphertext in the schemes used uh, these assumptions. This uh, figure just illustrate three-dimensional lattice, but it's not very good to imagine how it looks like in the real because the dimensions are, uh, there are more dimensions, of course. This is only the illustrative picture with the very simple lattice. And uh, as the lattice-based crypto is very popular, so there is a lot of schemes, a lot of proposals, and a lot of proposals just also come in the NIST post-quantum crypto calls. And uh, here is the, some list. I don't want to be too much specific and boring you, but this is just for your intention that a lot of schemes show up. Also, very remarkable family is co-based cryptography. This family is very long. It's uh, as old as the usually common asymmetric cryptographic schemes like RSA, which you know, or, e, or DSA algorithm. And uh, this uh, family use code, codes which are more or less uh, known in the link layers when you send the message and then you use the autocorrection codes and just to solve some mistakes. So this uh, family is also uh, used for the post-quantum era. And the uh, last big family is the hash-based. Why is this uh, family uh, such popular and uh, very important for us? Because uh, the schemes are, are also like quite old and it was proven by time that these schemes are like safe. So this is also something which we will use in the future days. And here is the, just the comparison of all families. Uh, on the top you can see the more mature families, which is the, the old ones and very used ones. Code bases are in the middle, it, but it is only just before, uh, because the, some schemes uh, show up later after Michaelis. And lattice based, uh, okay, entry is also like almost 30 years old, right? But uh, some newer schemes which are used in the standards are, are also quite uh, young and needs to be like the more explored if uh, doesn't uh, have some mistakes and errors. And uh, multivariate uh, cryptography and isogenic based cryptography is less mature and also it was proven by many teams that these schemes sometimes uh, contain bugs and mistakes and are not safe. Even some uh, schemes here was considered like the standards, but uh, some research teams recently in this year just the proof that some schemes are not safe and that uh, schemes has, uh, had to be uh, withdrawn from the competition. And uh, that brings us to the NIST post-quantum standardization. Uh, in the first round, there was the, I don't know, maybe more than 40 submissions, but some submissions was like uh, correct and uh, don't promote to the second round. In the second round, there were 26 semifinalists, and last year, NIST announced four candidates for the standards. What it means? That means a lot. Now, the NIST, just to point to some few schemes that, okay, these schemes will be probably next RSA, next DSA signatures. So now, from the last, uh, from, uh, from now on, from, okay, last year, everybody in the field just to work with these schemes, just to implement these schemes in hardware, in software, just edit these schemes into the libraries. We will show some progress in the libraries later in this speech, but the red ones are the winners, are the 
candidates for the standardization. The interesting fact is that uh, the NIST choose only one candidate for the key exchange, just the substitution for diffie hellman exchange. And this is the Kyber scheme. And the digital signature, NIST choose three schemes, Dilithium, Falcon, and Sphinx Plus. You can also see that the lattice base have the candidates for both purposes, and for the digital schemes, they also have the hash-based schemes, which is Sphinx Plus. These schemes has own pros and cons, and uh, I assume that NIST will be standardized all, but we will recommend for different use cases, different schemes. And because they point only just for uh, one CAM scheme, which is the Kyber, they still open the door to these orange schemes, which is the classic McKellys, Bike, and uh, HQC scheme as the alternatives. Why they do that? Because in case that the lattice-based family will be in the future some bug, some mistake, then we can simply uh, start to use something from the different family, which is the code base, McKellys, or bike. Uh, we did, uh, and a lot of researchers in the field did some estimation, some evaluation, because we are curious which schemes will be like good candidates and doesn't affect too much the performance and also the overhead. I mean overhead in the sizes, because uh, the post-quantum crypto is not just uh, about uh, performance increase and that all algorithms are quite massive uh, concerning uh, the number of cycles, but uh, these schemes usually have the much bigger sizes uh, of keys and of course then sizes of the signatures. So as we use only uh, like tens of bytes uh, for RSA signatures or e ECDSA, now we will use to, or we, we need to use to on the thousands of bytes of the signatures. So these signatures will be more massive and it could be the problem for the fields like IoT or some constrained devices or constrained protocols such as Sigfox, LoRa, where you have only just few bytes uh, for the message which are like communicated between the nodes. And uh, this is just the numbers. You can check the presentation. I put it to the chat, so we don't need to like spend too much time here. And just uh, now let's proceed with the, how the institutions across the world looks on the post-quantum and what should be done. As I mentioned NIST, NIST started everything then American NSA, National Security Agency, just released the new proposal of the Commercial National Security Algorithm Suite, uh, version 2.0, which says that we should directly just start it to use post-quantum cryptographic schemes and exchange these schemes uh, in all protocols and stop use the old common schemes like RSA and ESDSA and so on. But European institutions like uh, French NC, German BSI, perhaps also the British, uh, have the different view, a little different view. They are more cautious, they are more like uh, conservative, and they say, okay, let's start to exchange these schemes, but let's do that in the hybrid approach. Let's uh, implement these schemes in parallel and uh, do the hybrid signatures, do the hybrid key exchange, because they are still not uh, like convinced that the post-quantum crypto could be like the safe in the next 20 years, right? So they are like more a little uh, conservative in this. But uh, all these institutions just announced that the, the time for the transition, time for the migration should be soon. Should be since uh, 2025, 
and should end in 2030. So this is pretty in uh, after next year, right? So we should be like prepared and we should uh, like only just uh, also take account uh, this in our projects. And also check uh, new keep also somehow uh, works with these uh, recommendations and uh, will soon uh, announce own view and how should be done in the Czech Republic. And after 2030, I think that we will be use only just the post-quantum crypto. If not, perhaps it will be proven that quantum computer is not like uh, feasible to build, then we are okay, we don't need to do that because the post-quantum crypto adds the bigger sizes and adds the cycles, but it seems that we will transit, uh, we will migrate to this. And uh, in this table, you can just uh, compare simply what should be substitute. So for key establishment, when the sessions just built, so old RSA or e EC Diffie Hellman or Diffie Hellman just will be substitute by Kyber. And this is just what says Americans, what says NSA, right? This is not like definite what will be recommended by the Germans and French, uh, NC and so on. And for the digital signatures uh, used, for instance, in uh, HTTPS, it will be recommended Dilithium. And what is the funny, uh, for the digital signatures of software and hardware or some updates, will be recommended hash bait schemes. Concretely, Light and Mechali signature scheme and extended medical signature scheme. And uh, as we are approaching to the end, I will be more quick now. So this is just the timeline. I already talked about it. Everything will be start in next two years, and then there will be like the window of the five years when everything should be like trans uh, transformed to the post quantum. And after 2030, we will uh, just solely accept uh, the post-quantum solutions. This is the plan of NSA, and I think that also European uh, institutions like ENISA, NC, BSI, and so on will be recommended strongly this. And uh, here we have the just the, not, uh, not uh, exhaustive, but uh, just some examples of the libraries which are already available for you, for developers which you can use if you would like to add the post-quantum crypto. The, the most famous is uh, libOQS library. This is the essential library that uh, just was uh, uh, under the Open Quantum Safe project. And I think that a lot of teams and a lot of the, let's say, TELUS uh, and OpenSSL libraries use this essential library. But there are like more libraries and you can also check it in offline in my presentation. And uh, finally, in the last part of my talk, in a few minutes, I will just go through the, use, uh, the protocols which are used today and how they should be changed to instant uh, quantum, uh, quantum attacks. So let's start with less known MEXEC protocol. MEXEC is used on the second layer. It is not very common. I think that several of you may be heard about it. So MEXEC just to works with Ethernet frames. Of course, it, encryption is fine. It is used as uh, 256 long keys. But for the key agreement, there is the Diffie-Hellman or RSA and there we should like uh, use the post-quantum schemes. So some recent works from uh, last one or two years just started to do the experiments and just to start to implement the post-quantum crypto inside and just uh, try to figure out if Mexic will work with these. The conclusions are good for us. I think, uh, or the researchers think that the Mexic uh, are fine and could be simply uh, moved to quantum safe. What about the IPsec? This is more like uh, widely known. It uh, work on the third layer 
and it's used mainly between the rotors or maybe between the branches for the building the VPN tunnels. So IPsec is like big protocol and for the key exchange and authentication, it used the internet key exchange protocol version two. And this protocol still like have some cipher suites uh, using the common crypto, but now also some works proved that the, a lot of uh, these uh, recent candidates are fine for this. Except the classic Macaulay's because classic Macaulay's has the huge public keys, which are also like exchange. So this could be the obstacle for this. So we need to use uh, really efficient uh, schemes, which has the uh, smaller keys like lattice based. And uh, TLS, this is the probably most used the protocol because TLS is uh, almost everywhere in the internet. It, uh, use, it is used in HTTPS. And TLS uh, also used the key exchange and negotiation uh, before the session, uh, session is built, right? So uh, elliptic car VSA certificates should be somehow exchanged by the post quantum certificates. And also there are like uh, a lot of uh, studies that prove that some uh, DLTube or Falcon signature schemes are fine and even some hybridization also works here. There is only problem with the frames, but if you are using the jumbo phrase, they could like help us uh, for uh, TLS uh, transition to post quantum. And uh, SSH is also very uh, familiar, for, familiar for you. And it also used the asymmetric crypto. And uh, it, good, it is good that the SSH message are de designed to uh, take the big uh, messages, uh, which are large enough for post quantum. And uh, we can simply use everything from post quantum crypto. Uh, again, Mac Ellis, which using the large keys uh, could be problematic here. And uh, last but not least, I just uh, use, uh, I just put in my presentation, these main protocols are uh, certificates. And maybe let's, uh, uh, certificates as you know, have the sizes of uh, uh, hundreds, hundreds bytes. And of course you can use the chain of uh, certificates, which then have the kilobyte sizes, right? And uh, in this picture, there is the, the proposal where should be the, some amendments, some modifications in the uh, X.509 uh, uh, certificates format. So you can see that uh, there is a lot of like uh, fields where we should do some modifications and let's say propose some draft uh, drafts which will be standardized these new certificates and these new formats which will be like uh, ready for carrying the post quantum cryptography schemes. And uh, let's conclude my talk in the time. So we know now that uh, quantum computers may break current asymmetric cryptography we know that uh, we need to start to be prepared. We have a couple of years to do that. We already have the, some standards, which are like recommended by NIST and also by NSA and also by BSI and French NC. And uh, we know that there is still open topics. If we will do just the straight exchange, common cryptography by the post quantum crypto, or we will be more like conservative and we will do the hybrid approach. And for uh, some recent works, we know that already some uh, libraries and uh, security protocol start to, started to be developed and prepared for the quantum uh, safe or quantum era. So that's it, uh, that's my talk. I hope that you bring something interesting from this speech and there is just the references and thank you for your attention.
So I, I maybe <laughs> have only just one, two quick questions and then I will be stay here and we can like uh, just uh, talk uh, on the coffee. And so every is here who have the query question. Yes. Uh, if I heard you correctly, you ask on the symmetric uh, yes. cryptography, and your question was about if you if we should just uh, increase the sizes and if it will be fine. Yeah, I I'm sorry if I not emphasize uh, strongly. Yes, that's the correct. We need only to just increase the sizes, but it is only for the symmetric cryptography. For the asymmetric cryptography, we need to ex we need to change by the new post-quantum crypto. I hope that... Okay. Yeah, it will be secure if you just double sized. Mm -hmm. Another question? Uh, if not, thank you again, and I think we can like proceed with the next talk.